Bearded Dragon or Blue Tongue Skink? Welcome, welcome back to my channel. So as soon as I uploaded my Blue Tongue Skink setup video when I first got Morty, I got asked if I could do a Blue Tongue Skink versus Bearded Dragon video and I wanted to wait until I had Morty for a little while before I did that and now I've had him for a little while so we are doing that. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by The Dubia Dude. TheDubiaDude.com is an awesome place to go and get Dubia roaches and have them conveniently delivered to your house. As you guys know, Dubia roaches are my main staple food for all of my insect eating reptiles and the TheDubiaDude.com is now my main supply of getting those roaches. Dubia roaches are cleaner, healthier, hardier, and contain so much more protein than crickets and now you can have them delivered to your house. What's more convenient than that? The doodoo.com is super easy to navigate as well. You literally click a couple buttons, there are pictures and everything, and you're good to go. On top of all that, the Doobie Dude has your reptile in mind. He feeds the roaches all organic, he also reuses materials, and he reduces the amount of materials that he uses in order to lessen his impact on the environment so you know that you are getting super healthy roaches for your animal. And plus, super exciting, the Doobie Dude has extended my discount code for you guys. So we Whenever you place your order at thedoobydoo.com, make sure to use code L for 10% off your entire order. Thank you so much again to the Doobie Dude for sponsoring this episode. If you are brand new to the reptile world, you might be wondering why you would want to compare a bearded dragon and a blue tongue skink because they're obviously different animals. But these two animals are often the cause of debate as to which one is better. So I thought that I would put together a whole video about my personal experience with a bearded dragon and a blue tongue skink and just let you know what differences I've seen between the two. Quick disclaimer, this is not meant to be a care guide for either of these animals. This is is just my personal opinion on the care and handleability and all that good stuff of each of the animals. If you are in need of a care guide, I have a couple of bearded dragon care guides, feeding guides, setups, things like that. And Reptile Mountain TV does an amazing job at doing care guides and everything you need for blue tongue skinks. So definitely check out his video. I don't have a care guide for a blue tongue skink yet because I don't feel comfortable doing that until I've had him for quite a bit longer. But yeah, if you need care guides, definitely check those two things out but let's get started on that video first off let's talk a little bit about when you acquire one of these the price is vastly different between the two species getting a bearded dragon just a normal bearded dragon like Zaz here she was $35 Morty my Erie Jaya blue tongue skink was $300 and he is not a special morph that is one of the huge reasons that it took me so long to get a blue tongue skink because as you may know I waited for forever to get one of these I wanted one so bad that price point is gonna be a huge factor for a lot of people just like it was for me. Now, sometimes you may be able to find blue tongue skinks for a bit cheaper at places like reptile shows, looking at around $100, which sounds like it's wonderful, but most of the time that is because they are wild caught blue tongue skinks. Now the big thing about wild caught, which I've said multiple times, most of the time wild caught animals are going to come with parasites and added on vet visits to counteract those parasites. It's a hidden expense that most of the time the seller is not going to tell you that you have to pay for and it could result in very sick and even dying animals. Now the good thing about bearded dragons and northern blue tongue skinks is you don't have to worry about that. Bearded dragons and northern blue tongue skinks here in the United States are all captive bred because of Australia's super strict export laws, but you do have to look out for things like Indonesian blue tongue skinks and Irian Jaya blue tongue skinks because sadly a lot of the time sellers at reptile shows will try to sell wild caught Indonesian blue tongue skinks as northern blue tongue skinks and that is not the case so if you are looking to get a more human species of blue tongue skink like the Irian Jaya, Halmahera, Maruki, Mara I've never known how to say that word then just know what you're looking for this is another one of those times that lots of research 
comes into play. Indonesian Iridia blue tongue skinks are going to have black legs. They may be spotted with black, but they're going to have black legs, whereas the Northerns do not. So that is going to be your key difference in making sure that if someone is selling you a Northern blue tongue skink, that it is actually a Northern blue tongue skink. Wild caught is a huge debated topic for a lot of people. So that also comes into play here in the differences. And that leads us right into availability. Bearded Dragons are available anywhere and everywhere. You could literally go down to your local chain pet store and they surely will have a tank of Bearded Dragons, but please don't do that. Please don't buy from chain pet stores, but they are everywhere. For Blue Tongue Skinks, they're a little bit hard to find, so you're gonna be looking more into online sellers, Facebook groups that have local breeders and reptile shows in your area. Sometimes local family-owned pet stores will get them in, and a lot of times breeders will actually have wait lists for them. Them, so they're not going to be a thing that you can just get whenever you want. But if it's something that you really, really, really want, I highly suggest waiting for one to be available because they are wonderful animals. This is a huge difference in the two that I immediately noticed. Handling a bearded dragon is a lot easier than handling a blue tongue skink, but handling a blue tongue skink is a lot more fun than handling a bearded dragon. Handling a bearded dragon is this. You stick them on you or you stick them somewhere and they don't move. That is where they stay. But a blue tongue skink is gonna move around and explore and be excited to be around. Because of that little fact, I will let my kids hold Zaz, but I won't let them hold Morty because Morty likes to move and he will run if he gets the chance. in general is pretty similar, especially if we're looking at Northern Blue Tongue Skinks and Bearded Dragons. The tank size is going to be 40 gallon breeder minimum for them. I highly advise to go bigger than that. I just upgraded Zaz's tank and Morty will be getting an upgrade soon. When he is an adult, he's definitely going to be in a bigger tank. I suggest a 48 inch minimum tank size for an adult Bearded Dragon or Blue Tongue Skink. The temperature requirements are going to be pretty similar as well hot spot of about 100 for a blue tongue skink. Morty likes it a little cooler than that so his is at about 90 95 and same with Zaz. Zaz stays at about 90 because she has also always liked it cool but pretty similar there as well. The use of UVB for each of these animals is also a little different. They are both diurnal species so they do both benefit greatly from UVB. Now bearded dragons have to have to have to have full spectrum linear UV lighting while the use of UV is debated for its necessity for blue tongue skinks. I use linear UV lighting for my blue tongue skink because they are a diurnal species, which means in the wild they would be exposed to the sun. Some people, especially large breeding corporations, have kept these in rack systems without lighting. However, I still definitely think that they need lighting because like I said, they are exposed to the sun. So UV lighting is, I guess, more important for a bearded dragon in that you have to have full spectrum linear UV lighting and it has to take up about two thirds of your tank where a blue tongue skink is a little more lax on that. And for enrichment in those enclosures, I honestly think it's easier to give blue tongue skinks enrichment just because they do really good with loose substrate. Again, bearded dragon loose substrate is a highly debated topic. I don't give Zaz loose substrate because of the risk of impaction. I keep her on tile and I give her lots of things to climb and hide in and scratch up against and all of those things. But blue tongue skinks are burrowers. They will actually spend a lot of their time burrowed under the substrate, so they have to have a loose substrate. Because of this, that makes giving them enrichment a little bit easier because they're going to spend a lot of time burrowing, which is enriching to them. With bearded dragons, they actually enjoy climbing, so you can give them sticks and things to climb and they happily will. Whereas blue tongue skinks need to have all their decorations on the ground because they are a very heavy bodied species and they're not going to do very well if they fall. Now we have Morty. Morty is my eerie and jive blue tongue skink and he's going to be hanging out with me for this next little bit. But humidity. Humidity is another big thing which is going to be pretty different depending on the subspecies of blue tongue skink that you have. Morty here needs a pretty high humidity whereas a northern blue tongue skink and bearded dragons both need a low humidity. So if you like tropical tank setups, blue tongue skink is going to be super good for that. But if you like the more desert, aspen or tile, things like that, 
that, then a bearded dragon or a northern blue tongue skink is going to be the best way to go. talk a bit about feeding them. These guys are incredibly similar when it comes to feeding. They are omnivores, which means they have a large variety of things that they can eat. Mine both absolutely love dubia roaches and wax worms as a treat only. And they also eat veggies like leafy greens, like collard greens, turnip greens, mustard greens, things like that is going to be part of both their diet. But the cool thing about blue tongue skinks is that they also do very well on stable foods such as cat foods as babies and dog foods as adults and Rapashi's Blue Buffet, Arcadia's Blue Tongue Skink food. And according to some breeders, they actually live longer when kept on these pre-made foods, as long as you are feeding them high quality foods, not just going out to Walmart and grabbing the first thing that you see. That being said, Morty here has never been picky. He will eat whatever I put in front of him to the point of I've literally woken up in the middle of the night and seen him licking his empty food bowl. Whereas Zaz is super picky. She will starve herself and go on hunger strikes until she gets whatever bug it is that she wants, which most of the time I have found is always hornworms. <laughs> this might just be my experience. I know some people's bearded dragons are garbage cans, like they eat everything. But personally, I've found that Zaz is a lot more picky than Morty is. And that also goes for baby bearded dragons. Some baby bearded dragons have a very hard time transitioning into eating less bugs and more veggies. So that is another thing that you might have to deal with. Speaking of baby bearded dragons, baby bearded dragons are so expensive to feed. This is something that no one told me when I got Zaz and I found out very quickly the hard way. Baby bearded dragons can easily put away 80 to 100 small crickets every single day. <laughs> they eat a lot. Unfortunately, I didn't have dubia roaches when Zaz as a baby, so I'm not sure how many of those they eat. Usually animals will eat less dubia than they do crickets because dubia roaches are more hardy. They eat a lot and it gets very expensive very fast. With Zaz, I was having to buy cases of a thousand crickets every other week because she ate that many and also half the crickets always died. With Morty, he is super easy to feed as a baby with one of the small cans of cat food that would last him the entire week. For a little over a dollar, I could feed him for an entire week, which is absolutely wonderful if you're looking on the expense side of things. That kind of balances out the initial cost of that $300 versus $35 when you are looking at how much you're going to have to pay to feed them. I know a lot of people ask me all the time how much I spend on my animals a month or what's the initial price of setting up for animals. So if that is something that you are interested in, let me know below because I was thinking about doing a series where I just look at every single animal and let you know how much much I paid to initially set everything up by everything and how much a month it costs for food and vitamins, whatever, all that stuff. If you're interested in that, let me know down below. He is being so calm. I've never held him and him been this calm in my life. He's falling asleep in my hand. And water. Bearded dragons cannot see standing water. So a majority of them will not drink out of a water dish unless you have like a little water fountain installed or you put a bubbler. Zaz won't even drink with the bubbler in my water dish for a couple of years. I didn't have a water dish in there at all. So to combat that, they get a lot of the moisture that they need from the greens and the insects that they eat, which is why it's so important to gut load. But they also will get water from baths. They love to drink water in the bath. This can be a downside because giving a bearded dragon baths that often is pretty time consuming and it can be inconvenient. Blue tongue skinks have no problem seeing standing water. They will drink out of their dish. They will soak in their dish when they're shedding. They have no problem at all with that. So that is one thing that is a lot easier with blue tongue skinks. We'll just talk about some of the smaller things, behaviors, looks, things like that. So first of all, when they shed, it's vastly different. With bearded dragons, they'll shed in little pieces and it takes a long time. It can take a week or two for them to get all that shed off. And it'll usually be throughout the whole tank and it'll leave the tank dirty for a long time. Blue tongue skinks will usually get all their shed off in a single day. They'll soak in their water dish and then they almost shed like a snake, but it doesn't peel off in 
one piece like a snake. It just kind of all comes off at the same time, if that makes sense. Another thing that's just purely personal preference is what makes a bearded dragon a bearded dragon and a blue tongue skink a blue tongue skink. When Zaz wakes up in the morning, the first thing she does is she yawns really big and she stretches out that beard and puffs up her body. And it's a really cool thing to watch. And with Morty, whenever he is exploring a new habitat or just exploring in general, he is always flicking that blue tongue. But yeah, those are just two really cool things to watch, which you can watch all the time because they are both diurnal, which means that they are going to be active all day. But that is about it for this week, guys. I just wanted to do this because one of you guys asked. And these are two animals that people always ask, which one of these should I get, a blue tongue skink or bearded dragon? So I just wanted to compile all of my personal experience with the two. So to answer the question of whether you should get a blue tongue skink or a bearded dragon, there really isn't an answer. It's whatever you are looking for in an animal. If you have dreamed of getting a blue tongue skink and that is your dream animal and you you don't have the money so you're looking into getting a bearded dragon save the money for the blue tongue skink because you'll enjoy it a lot more and vice versa if you really really want a bearded dragon but someone has tried to talk you into getting a blue tongue skink get the bearded dragon they're both really awesome animals and they are both worth the weight and the money blue tongue skink or bearded dragon whichever one you want because they are both awesome but if you're not already feel free to follow me on my other socials and like subscribe and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put out a new video, which is every Sunday and Wednesday. This week's Instagram shout out goes to Corbin's Reptiles for following me on Instagram and going through and liking a whole bunch of my stuff. Thank you so much, Corbin. You are the bee's knees. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.